Hi, this is Grady Pruitt from GradyPruitt.com, and today we're going to do a tutorial on how to create a procedural ripple or zigzag pattern in Blender Cycles. In uh, a previous tutorial, I showed how to create a stripe pattern, like the one that that uh, the the basic stripe pattern. But at the end of that tutorial, I asked if anybody knew how to chain take what I had done and create a ripple pattern. I never heard back from anybody, but I had an epiphany uh, a week or so ago on how to create the ripple pattern, and this is pretty much the result that I got from it. So I did a little playing around with the file, uh, learned a few things, and so I'm going to share with you today what I learned. So I already have a scene set up. Uh, this is just to kind of show off the mater the material whenever we get to the end. It's not really important. I do have the uh, I do have the object that we're going to do. We're going. I do have it UV unwrapped. Uh, I'm just going to jump to the beginning of the animation. Uh, that's just so that we can get the plane up here, so because it'll make it easier to see what we have going on. And I also already have a material set up on this object. Now. Uh, if you saw my previous tutorial on how to create the uh, procedural stripes in Blender, this is uh, a variation off of the plaid pattern. And uh, so I'm not going to go into great detail on how to set it up because I, I, went, in, I went more in detail in that one. Uh, just to kind of give you a quick overview, this wasn't something I showed in the other one, but it's, this is just a bump to give it a little texture. Uh, here we just have uh, diffuse and glossy mixed with the Fresnel. This just Kent Trammell's Fresnel shader. And uh, that's mixed in with some velvety just to kind of give it a little softness. But what we're really interested in, that that's not important. That's just what I use for this particular object. Uh, you can use whatever nodes you want for, for these. But what's important is what are we going to put into the diffuse shader? And that's where this comes in. Now this right here is the striping setup and uh, just to kind of give you a quick overview uh, I, again I have this connected into UV so so uh, what it is is it's there's uh, two mapping nodes connected to a modulate node and a color ramp uh, and these are mixed together with a uh, RGB mix node uh, the reason why there's two is because they they each have different rotations. One the, one of them is at 45 degrees for Y. The other one is at minus 45 for X. The uh, minus 45 the the 45 for for Y gives us the horizontal stripes, and the uh, minus 45 gives us the vertical ones. The modulate, this is, if you saw Bartex Garupa's Wood Shader Forge tutorial on CG Cookie, this is pretty much the same node from that tutorial. Uh, one of the nodes that he showed, node groups he showed how to put together. Uh, it's just a modulo with a couple of divide nodes, and I went in a little bit more to t detail on the previous tutorial on how to set that up. Uh, one of the imp important things to know is that the cuts value right here determines how frequently the pattern repeats. And so I have, since I want these two to be even, I have these connected with a value node. And I'll just, I'll explain what this multiplier is here in a minute. And then the really magic for the striping pattern itself happens right here within the color ramp. Uh, the, the pattern for the stripes itself is determined by how many and where you place the markers and what color they are. And that's what determines what striping, what what pattern you're going to have within the repetition. So this controls the repetitions. This controls the pattern itself. And then this mix node, like I said, just uh, mixes it together so that we have the uh, plaid pattern. So how do we take this plaid pattern and turn it into the ripple pattern? Well, one of the things we'll want to do is we'll want to be able to rotate it. And then the other thing that we'll want to do is find some way to choose between these two uh, 
groups and see, uh, you know, part of it we wanted to do one side and the other one we wanted to go the other direction. So we're gonna, we got to figure out how to set all that up. So the first thing we're going to do here is we are going to, I'm going to select these bottom three right here. These are the ones for the horizontal stripes. And I'm going to hit Control Shift D to duplicate those. And I'm just going to move those up here out of the way. And we'll come back to this in a, in a moment. Uh, but I, I used... I used this group so that I could get the uh, the horizontal striping already set up here. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, if we, one of the things that I, I noticed right away whenever I was doing the previous striping tutorial is if I have this at zero, then we already have the stripes going one direction. So how do we get the crossing stripes? So if we change this to minus 90, you see we get the stripes that are crossing. The only thing is that we got this little uh, area over here where it appears that the pattern basically stopped in the middle of the pattern. Well, that's easy to fix. All we have to do is shift any of these X, Y, or Z location values. If we shift it to 1, for this particular object, it might be a different value for another object. But for this particular object, if we shift it to 1, we can get rid of that uh, visual error. So now with our pattern rotated like we want it, how do we get it so that we choose between this group and this group? That's where this other pattern comes into play. So we're going to modify this color ramp so that it actually becomes a mask for the other two. So what we're going to do, we only need two two uh, bars here. So let's, uh, let's remove one. Uh, let's move all these but one, or two, I'm sorry. We'll make one of these completely black. And the other one we want to change it so that it is completely white. So now half of the half of it is black, half of it is white. That's what we want. And we're going to use this as a mask. So we're going to plug this into the factor for the mix RGB node. And just like that, we have our ripple pattern. Now, one of the things I mentioned earlier is that the value over here is what uh, controls everything. Well, it turns out with the setup the way that we have it right here, if we, uh, I'm going to mute this multiply value here for just a moment. If you see with this whole value here of 10, uh, the, the, the patterns aren't aligned properly. Well, if we change this to 11, they're still not aligned properly. If we go to 12... And it looks like they're aligned up uh, properly again. So, like, uh, what if we did uh, 15? And you see that they're still lined up. And if we did 21, you see that they're, they're that it's still staying all lined up like we want it. So it turns out that this is actually pretty useful because by by using the, by knowing that this uh, works with values of three, we can just use this multiplier here to set it so that whatever value we plug right here, we can just plug in. We can plug in any whole number over here and it will automatically ripple like we want it to over here. Now the one thing that I will tell you, uh, this works, this multiplier works for the horizontal striping. It doesn't work as well for the for the uh, for the ones going up and down, uh, but just so that you can see, uh, another way that you can uh, affect this is by simply working on this value here. If we change this to 1.2 for this example, see the striping uh, lines back up like we want it to. 
Now, uh, depending on what value we have, what we have for our value, and uh, you know uh, whether you're using the horizontal or vertical, you might actually need to plug in a different value there for the shift. Uh, it might be you know you might get away with as little as a one point zero zero five. Uh, but just play around with it until you find one that uh, that that works. And like I said, you'll probably have to to go fairly small with your change to uh, get it to actually line up. But it, it can be really tricky. Now, the other thing that you can do, instead of having to mess with that, the other thing that you could do would be Hold on. Okay, there we go. Uh, the other thing that you can do would be to go into the UV editor and rotate by 90 degrees. And then you have your pattern like you want it to. So we're going to undo that and I'm just going to shift this up just a little bit okay so with that out of the way the next thing that we want to do is uh, change the uh, we might want to change the angle of our uh, of our ripple pattern. And when I first thought about doing this, I thought uh, if I changed the values here, like if I change this to uh, minus 60, and if I change this other one to uh, by a similar value so that I'm changing it to, say, uh, come on, 30. And that didn't quite work like I had, I thought it might. Uh, let's see if I change this one to minus 120. And you can see it just doesn't quite work the way that we are expecting it to. Uh, for one thing, uh, one pattern is larger than the other. And for another thing, they're not lining up. So is there a way to get this to work more like what we would want? Well, actually, it turns out that if we adjust the scale of the x values on both the horizontal and on on both uh, sets of stripes so if we change this one to 0.2 and change this one to 0.2 then you can see we have a sharper angle and if we change this to 2 and change this one to 2 and just like that we have a shallower angle so that's how you can vary the angle of your uh, ripple pattern. Now, the one thing to keep in mind uh, with this and with this next thing that I'm going to show you, whatever you do to one, you have to do to the other so that you keep the pattern going like you want it to. So the one last thing that to be aware of is uh, what if you want to change the pattern and that actually turns out to be really super simple to do. So I'm just going to plug in some different values here uh, real quickly. No, no, point 0.1. Make this one point 0.15. I'm just setting up a different pattern. You can set up whatever pattern you want here. Um, let's see. So this one, the next one, we do two. Oh, I'm sorry, point two. Point two. Yep, point two. There we go. And then we need a couple more. 
uh, we'll say one of these two. Point nine five. Take this other extra one, we'll put it at point nine. And we'll take this one, we'll change it to point eight five. And let's just change the color of this one to this red. Okay, and just like that, we have a new pattern going, but it's only affecting one stripe. It's not affecting the other the other one. So what we got to remember to do, uh, like like with the adjusting the scale, we want what we do to one, we want to do the other so that we maintain the the make sure that everything else is looking the same. So if we shift D to duplicate, drop that in on the over the line. And we'll take this other one and we'll control X to duplicate it to maintain the connections. And just like that, we have the ripple pattern back in place. So if we come back over here and jump back to the last frame of the render of the animation, we'll run a render and we'll be back whenever this finishes rendering. And we're back, and the render is almost done here. And uh, as you can see, this is with the new uh, striping pattern that we did. So in this tutorial, we showed you how to uh, take the, preview, the plaid pattern, rotate it so that the stripes were going at an angle, uh, created a mask using the uh, using another uh, set of the nodes for the stri for the striping nodes and uh, how to adjust the angle how we could shift things to not only correct for uh, the uh, pattern running off of the edge but also so that the stripes would line up we talked about how to change the angle of the uh, ripple pattern and we talked about uh, how to some things to keep in mind whenever you're trying to uh, change the pattern itself. So uh, hopefully you will be able to create your own ripple patterns. If you uh, make a ripple pattern and use it in a project, I'd love to be able to see it. Uh, whether if you, if you use any of the striping patterns that I've shown you how to do so far, like wh whether from the previous tutorial or from this tutorial, uh, send me a link. You know, I'd like to see how you're how how people are using this because I, I you know it's one of those things. The stripes are something that we see in everyday life, both in ripple patterns and plaid patterns, in in basic stripe patterns. You know, we see it every day, and yet in renders, it's something that we don't see very often. And so I, I found this technique to be very uh, easy to put together, and I'd love to see how other people are using what I'm sharing here. So if you like this video, like it, share it. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel because I plan on doing more tutorials like this one. And... Uh, if you want to learn more about me and my art and uh, be updated with uh, future tutorials, be sure and check out my website at GradyPruitt.com. This is Grady Pruitt saying so long for now. Happy blending, and we'll see you next time.